Hey guys, here we are back in the shop. Uh, I got a new little kit we're going to um, go over today. Um, this, is, I don't have the door attached to it right now, but this is a kit for a 120.3 scale outhouse. See this, I've already got this one put together and painted. I said, um, I'm going to go over how to put it together, how to paint it, how I color it, um, everything I do to get it together. So it's going to be in a kit form. There's the door I have not attached. It's uh, been weathered and um, stained. So I'm going to get it. Um, going to, we're going to make a new one just like this. I think I'm going to go with a different color because I'm going to put two or three of these across my uh, layout. So anyway, um, I'm going to get this part. I, I've got the uh, parts to the um, outhouse laying here. Each of these are two pieces to one side of the wall like this is the inner part of the wall and then this is the outer and what you have to do what what i'm gonna offer it two different ways i'm gonna offer it like this um for about ten dollars cheaper than um putting the skins together uh what i do is you just have to no matter either way you get it, the whole thing needs to be washed because it is resin uh, there is mold release so you just you have to wash everything now these are very thin uh, they have all the neat little um, the uh, the markings on the wood and everything's really detailed. But um, you have to take the skin and and just lightly sand the back of it on both sides, and then uh, I use I use epoxy, and that way you can put them together and uh, hold them or clamp them until it's um, dried, and then that gives you a whole wall. It actually makes it stronger because. Um, the two pieces glued together stronger than if it was just that one thickness. So anyway, I'm going to, um, like I said, there's two pieces to everything, like even the roof. Um, you got the in interior part of it, and then you have the out exterior skin of it out here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get, um, go ahead, and I'm going to glue all the um, skins together, and uh, we'll move along from there. I just want to kind of show you what the video is starting out with. And um, I'll get that stuff done, and I'll be right back. Okay, here we are back. Um, I want to go over um, actually gluing the skins together. Uh, here's um, one I've already done. Um, on this, this is the back wall. So you, uh, by gluing them together, you get all the good detail here and the in interior detail. When you glue these together, you just need to make sure that the um, this piece fits in the middle of this one because this has overlapping uh, pieces that go on the sides of the, um, they, they, oh, they cover over the sides here. So this piece has to make sure it's in the middle and try to keep the gap on each side the same or the, the width. I kind of eyeball it, it, it it's, and so it makes sure pretty close. Um, anyway. But before you do that, here's here's another one we're getting ready to do. This is the front wall. That's the back wall, front wall. Um, what you want to do is clean all any flashing off at all, and then I take a uh, this is a one of those sponge um, sanders, and I take it and hold it and just lightly sand over because what we're doing is we're scuffing up the um, resin so it'll it will accept a hold together with the other part. So we're doing both sides. I just have, usually have a big piece of wood, I lay this on, and then I just scuff it. But, um, one thing you need to do for any of this is you need to take some um, dishwashing soap, like a uh, Dawn dishwashing soap, get you a, a bowl with some very, just very lukewarm, not, not hot at all, water, and just wash all the parts. And um, because, like I said, it's got the uh, mold release on, that'll help the paint stick later. And it also, uh, it really won't help the backside because we're actually scuffing it so, it, so it'll attach. But, um, but to do this, uh, it's pretty easy. Now, one thing about the door, and the reason I'm showing you the door here is because we, we need to um, make sure that the, the width of the door, top and bottom, stays the same. Is I made two pieces, this just popsicle sticks, and that will fit inside the door and so what this does is once we go put our skin on we can stick this in and it allows the door to keep the space keep it spaced at the bottom correctly now 
here on the outside you'll have to make sure that the the top edges are in the middle but it's kind of just make sure that the doors don't get pinched in so you don't end up with something like that's pulled in like that when it's done because once the um epoxy sets it will move but it's a little harder so the reason i'm going to show you this one but this is very easy to do all i'll just take five minute epoxy I need to, we need to do it on the door actually because this is smaller than this. We don't get too much on the sides. So you can see there's just, well, we'll get rid of the excess here shortly. We're just going to take and mix it up right on the part. Make sure you get it mixed well. And all we do is we're taking this just act, act like a spreader. And all you need is a thin coat. It does not take much, as long as it actually touches both sides. It's good. One thing you need to keep on hand when you're doing stuff like this is uh, a paper towel. Uh, uh, toilet paper works good also because it, it, it soaks up well and you can get it in crevices and stuff. But we're just making sure, let's see if you can see a sheen on there. You can see, I've got a sheen on the whole thing where it's just covered, on, or just bare, a film on all of it. All right, now we're going to take the door skin, and I'm going to, let's see if you can see it, just lay, lay it on there. Now this is five minute epoxy, it takes about five minutes to work. But what you want to do first is you want to pop it on and then squeeze it to make sure we get good coverage. You can actually move it back and forth on there to make sure you get good coverage. All right. Now, you're going to take your popsicle stick or whatever the piece of wood you use, put it at the top. I'll put it at the bottom. Okay. Now, as I'm letting it dry, there's a little bit of epoxy on this overlap here. And that's where we're going to take a Q-tip. We're going to spin in our fingers to get the fibers loose. And it's going to run down that edge to clean that out on both sides. If you don't think you've got enough of that cleaned out, you can take a sharp edge of like a uh, like one of the pieces of popsicle stick that's cut. Uh, I don't have one here, but um, something's got a 90 degree angle on it. And just rub it down there and it'll pull that, pull the, whatever it is in that corner. So what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that our cover, that our overlap's the same on both sides. And we're going to set this off to the side to dry. Now your priority is to make sure that the overlaps are pretty much the same. If you This one's off just a tad on the bottom, but we can sand that off later because it, it actually sits, here's the base, it actually sits on the, on the base. That excess there will be sanded off. So we are, got that done. We're going to um, make sure we got a good seal. Now one thing is, you also got to look for, is on the back side is, um, let me show you on this one is that these are very thin sheets of uh, very thin castings so you can get a little bleed through of your epoxy on the back side so that's why you got to have the uh, i just keep a roll of toilet paper around and you can as it's before it dries you can rub that out and it'll click it'll pick up all that epoxy and clean that out if not um, it, it'll fill in that crevice so you want to um Pay attention to the backside, make sure there's not any epoxy bleeding through, and just rub it off if there is. So I looked at this one, and it, it does not have any bleed through anywhere. So we're going to let that sit to the side, and I'm going to finish sheeting these. Um, here are the sides. I've got still got to do those. And when you put those on, you just try to center this in this piece, just like that. So we got to finish doing the sides. All right, I'll get all these um, done and um, 
then we'll move along from there. But I, it does make it a lot more rigid. I put those two pieces together where they're um, flat, a little bit flexible. They're a lot. I mean, they're just. In, I mean, they're, they're good, pretty strong now. So let me get this stuff finished up, and we'll be back. Okay, here we are back. I just want to. Um, I've got everything, all the parts glued together. I just want to show you uh, one of the little uh, things about this kit. People don't realize how hard it is. You're when you're building the, when you're making molds for this, that you're making two complete sets and they have to match. Okay, so so you just think that you're measuring here and all and you're doing this without it being put together. So you're making you've got it drawn out. You're making the parts, and there can be little things that were missed or whatever. Anyway, I was going to show you one of them. It's an easy fix. As you can see the sidewall fits on this base here and if i take this sidewall sit it here it fits there but as you bring it over you can see it hits you can see it hits this joist right here coming down so it was just a, a fact in measurement but it's, e it's an easy fix i just come in here set both these on here and both sides because these are exact same are, are, have to be fixed you just take take this put this in place make sure it's seated down on the base trying to make sure i've got in the camera and then just take this and um, like i said make sure it's all seated flush down on the well i'm trying to do this in front of the camera it's easy to do it on the table you just got to make sure that's seated there bring this piece over and mark it you'll mark on that side you'll take it move it around and mark on the other side you can see i i have marked this on both sides now what you do is just take a razor saw and you clean it you cut it going that way and then cut it straight down going that way that'll alleviate this joist coming down here and hitting this you just want it to touch the top now if you don't cut that perfectly it's okay because you'll never see it because once this is inside there and the roof is applied see the roof comes over you'll never see any of that anyway I mean it's actually gonna be down lower but you'd never see it so I want I want to go ahead and show you that and I'm just gonna take just a, like a standard razor saw I just want to make sure you try to go try to go as vertical as you can. Let's see, can you see this? Yeah. Anyway, we're gonna go that way and then come back and cut this way. It's gonna take a little while because this is a real fine tooth razor saw. Okay, you see I cut that away. Now this fits on top. It just goes that way. Fits on top and it allows these both to sit on there. Hope you can see that. All right, I'm going to get all four joists done the same way and then we'll, we'll move along from there. Okay guys, here we are back. Um, I was going to show you, the next thing we want to do is after we get all the sides done, I, what I do is I take and um, just put set this up around the uh, base. And what we're doing is just making sure everything fits. So I've got rubber bands here, top and bottom, just to make sure it all goes together. Now one thing you, I, I do now is trial fit everything and make sure everything, like I said, fits appropriately. Um, you got the the toilet seat that goes in there you need to make sure that sits down there's, there's little pedestals on the back that it, the back of it sits on and then the front edge i have found that um you can see down in here let's see if you can see it there's a little piece right here that comes up and the front end of this seat sits on it you may have to trim that down just a little bit to get this to meet this because it should fit 
this is the toilet seat and this is the front and this should fit just in front of it just like that so it it fits in there this sits down on the um, the front of that little pedestal and then the, the rear sits on the back and then this comes in and glues this way you need to make sure it all fits with the floor in there fits appropriately so that, that just just takes some little fitting now one thing I did tell you wrong that I need to go back and tell you is um, on when you're cutting these joists this way you need to um, mark it with the front on one side and then the rear on the back because it's not the exact same cut so you need to mark those you need to mark one half front and one half back and then mark those to cut them so now it's all together uh, another thing I do you can see that this joist here overlaps this side so I've taken a pen pencil and I've marked that and what we're going to do is when we get ready to prime this we're going to put a piece of tape so we don't have so we don't have primer or paint on that area so it'll, it will attach to this area here attach to the wall without you know the paint it'd be glue up against paint because you, you may pull pull apart later so we marked all four corners uh, maybe I, yeah I did that one but I marked all four corners to allow for that uh, so we can the glue to be attached attached directly to the resin okay um, like I said there's a, a lot of trying to go from a drawing to the building there's always you know you, you're gonna have some little bit of discrepancies there now when I cut these pieces off here you've got this piece that comes up and it sticks out this way this roof on mine it I, I, what I did and it made it fit perfect made it fit fine was let me get this try and get hold up base on there if you set this roof on here right now it's just hard to do holding it like this 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 sticks out a little bit so once we get all this glued together we're going to take just take a, a sanding block and take that edge off we'll put some tape along here and take that edge off it'll allow the roof to sit directly down on there without any problems so what we're going to do we're going to get um, I'm going to get this uh, taken back apart I'm going to show you how I prime it and you, you need to really go ahead and paint the interior if you're going to try to get all the detail. Uh, I, I painted this and I put some washes with some burnt umber washes in there to give it like a, 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 a little, like an aged wood look on the inside or a more not old wood but just like recently aged wood. So let me get this apart. We'll go through how to, how to prime it and then go from there. Oh, one thing I didn't show you real quick is you need to maintain have these spacers on hand is it doesn't matter on the top now that this is the glue is dried but on the bottom because it's not supported you need to have that little that little wooden spacer so it fits in there to keep this at the right the same width at the bottom as it is at the top because if you don't this this bottom side will try to come in so that spacer allows me to put all this together without it pulling that front end with the with the um, rubber bands all right well, let me get this pulled back apart and we'll go from there okay here we are back getting ready to uh, prime everything uh, what I was going to show you is how I did this you see where um, I made the line here and there's a line here and I've taken um, just regular painters tape uh, it pop, I mean it resins kind of uh, really slick so um, I took uh, this is like uh, packing tape just cut it in strips and pull it here and fold it over to match itself on the back side here this will allow that it, so it um, kind of holds on a little bit better so I did both of those and now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna refrain from painting this edge here that's the edge that um, glues to this piece here so we're gonna paint the center here but we're gonna kind of refrain from hitting the edge there and also there so I, I may just take another piece of uh, tape and just put just a very small piece down both those sides to keep from getting paint on them and then we're going to go ahead and prime both sides um, you can use uh, a, a couple different paints um, I use now for this one here I use the um, 
testers the testers primer that you get for like model uh, the model airplanes model uh car stuff like that i use that primer uh there are some uh Krylon primers you can use uh, i generally tend to go for the gray primers um uh, but anyway you shoot real light coats of primer on there and um you know one or two just make sure you get good coverage uh and then let it sit up and dry just give it plenty of time to dry uh like i said resin is a slick surface uh this does um there was um I use baby powder or cornstarch to um, put in the mold. And it does give it a little bit of rougher surface, but still, it, it, it resin itself is kind of slick. So you just need to uh, take give you a couple light coats of primer. Make sure you get good coverage. So I'm gonna go get all this prime together, and then we'll move along from there. Okay, guys, what we've done here is um, I've only primed. The inside. I hadn't done the outside yet. I've only primed the inside because all I'm doing is going to get it all together and then prime the outside of it. But anyway, what I did is I primed it and then I came back on the inside and I'm going for like a newer type um, uh, outhouse, the interior anyway. Um, so what I did is I painted it with a um, Americanus, the camel color. All right. Um, if you're looking for like an older wood, like it's been sitting there for a long time, you can go like something like a, a really light colored, it's, a, it's, it's called Desert Sand. This is a neatest acrylic. And the difference is the camel, and this is a bunch of washes of um, uh, burnt umber on top of it. It kind of gives it a, uh, still of a, a newer wood that's starting to get its, uh, you can see all the creases and everything into it now if you do the desert sand now this is an old car i've done this is a resin kit that i make um but this is a desert sand with black washes on it and it kind of gives it a, a more of a faded um older looking wood so you can do um either one on the interior so what i've done is i got all this done I'm, i've got a good coat on it and you have to paint the interior first because if once you stick this together it's just hard to get the brushes down in there the first one i painted it after i got together and it was just it was a bear to get in there so i went ahead and pre-painted you can see where i left the edges that i'm gonna glue unpainted and you know just a little bit of paint in here is not going to hurt anything um it, i just wanted to uh, stick together so now what we're going to do is take this and we're going to glue i'm not going to glue it to the base yet but i'm going to use the base as a uh base to keep it square and I am going to glue the three sides together or yeah three sides together so I'm going to use this as a base to keep it square and I'm going to glue the two sides onto the back all right I'm going to get that done and what we'll do from there we'll go ahead and install the I need to paint this we're going to install the toilet seat and the front cover and like I said, you can do all your washes later because um, you just you're put you know putting the washes on and just letting them dry. So you can reach reach a brush in there. Oh, I did want to tell you um, when you're painting when you're painting this, uh, I don't have one because I've used them all. Um, I buy brushes um, from Hobby Lobby. They sell some great great sets. Uh, for what five dollars you get to 40 percent off and they have a nice wide brush a square wide brush and i know they're i've used them all and they're in another room but anyway they're nice and smooth or, or, or soft and they they really brush this on and gets it down into the crevices and uh just helps the paint flow really well so anyway those are good brushes if you go down to hobby lobby um anyway let me get this glued together oh on the base also i did not glue i did not paint the sides because you're going to end up gluing the base to the side. So I left those unpainted also. So I will get this, um, the three sides together, show you how we install the toilet seat, and then we'll move along. Hey guys, here we are back. Um, <clears throat> what I want to show you, and of course I screwed up and didn't take a video this part, is I have I have this the, the box all put together here. It does fit over the base. It was not glued to the base. So I can pull, pull that in and out. What I did want to show you was, um, let's see if we can see in here. Uh, right here, the toilet seat that sits in there. You've got the um, 
the main seat that has a little um, 90 degree at the back of it and then you have the front cover let's see here you see the front cover right here okay what you have to do is um, now I don't have the part I've already got it installed but this is the master mold of it what you have to do is take it and, ex and once you get this box together well right before you get the box together you need to hold it together with rubber bands and what you need to do this piece right here is this is like a support piece right there is you need to take and it you're, you're taking off you just are going to take an exacto knife and cut off just a little bit until this seat gets low enough to be covered by the front piece now that's with the base sitting in it because what, what happens is if you don't do that you'll see a little tiny gap here at the bottom let's see if you can see it see a, you would see a little tiny gap but if you just trim that down that piece right there has to be trimmed on both sides before you glue it together and I try like I tell everybody I trial fit everything I put the base down and I take rubber bands just plain old rubber bands before I glue it together and I just hold it hold it together like that and I trial fit everything and that's one thing I did not show you I should have gone in there and done that but anyway um, another thing is once you get this all glued to get once it's glued together solid um, before you would saw you saw where this edge came out to a 90 degree here okay it came out and made a short 90 degree what I did was um, to make this roof fit up nice and flush so it slides on there and it fits flush down the side is I took and put um, I cut a small piece of tape yeah, I'm, I'm just doing this real fast and put it across on both sides now this, I did it just like this and what I did was I took a, a sanding block and I just sanded down until I, I kind of smoothed this side up all the way down so it does take that corner off and that allows you to uh, that allows the roof to fit nicely down that side there okay it's it slide right on and then the other side it all fits up okay so that's really easy the, the base is still not glued in here uh, it's just sitting in there um, but I want to kind of explain what I've done here up to this point. All right, what I'm going to do now is I'm, I'm, I'm going to go over here and get my uh, uh, paints together, and I'm going to show you how I put washes in here. And this is something you just, you, I'll explain it here in a minute. So I'm going to get my parts together, and then we'll uh, move along. Okay, guys, here we are back. Um, I'm going to mix up some um, a wash real quick. Um, this is just a traditional. This is a burnt umber. You can get the also a traditional burnt umber. It doesn't matter what brand you get. Um, one thing, if you the, you have these sitting a while, they can kind of start dry out a little bit. Now this one's a little bit less. In, there's not much left in it, but um, some of the bigger bottles they can get really thick, and sometimes you have to add water to them to uh, get them to loosen up. But one thing I do do is um, on the older bottles is I'll go over to the junk drawer and grab like an old, just like a, just a, a screw, and I'll drop it down in there and I'll add water to it. And that just gives you an agitator to make sure you get it good and mixed up. Okay. But anyway, to mix a um, wash, all I'll do is take a little bit of water, small cup. We're going to add... Right, we're going to have to add. You just have to mix it until um, you get a good bit in there. Um, what I look for is uh, well, the thing about it is you can the thin you can mix it thin or thicker. Uh, you you want it to, to run pretty easily, um, but you can always add more coats of wash. Um, it's still like the consistency of water. But you gotta get it mixed up really good, and this may I was just still mixing. It takes a little while to get to mix up. All 
Okay, I got the hard parts out of it. Now that may be a little bit too thick because you want it to be a wash where it's just more or less like water. And if you ever do, if, it, if you do have any thick parts, because that may just be left over from the bottle, you just don't want to dip your brush all the way to the bottom. Let's see here. All right, I'm still. Like I said, you can always do washes, do more after it dries. All right, we're gonna go with that. All right, now what I do is I like to take a brush, a really soft brush, because it holds more. And what we're gonna do is, like I said, the bottom is not glued on yet. We're just gonna dip it in there, and we're just gonna brush it in. And most of this, most of this will run out. But you wanna cut, hit, hit all the all the crevices, all the, and you, you're not hurting anything by rubbing it in there. And see the, br the soft brush gets in all the crevices all the way around. And we are making a mess on the table because this is all running through. Now you can do the washes in the step before before you glued it all together if you want. That may be a little easier for you. But um But what you want to do is make sure you turn around, make sure that you've gotten in all the crevices, you've got everything covered. Now, let's see if you can see this. Look at all, I've got a mess here on the table, but hopefully you can see in here. I, you can see it's just, it's mainly holding on all the crevices. Now, I'll probably do this once or twice more, but all this will, um, ev most of it will just evaporate off and you'll just see it in the crevices itself. So I'm going to go ahead and let this set and I'm going to do a couple more coats, but this just kind of gives it like, you can see the, the cracks and, uh, and gives it a little bit of weathering. Um, if you do the lighter um, desert sand color and then do it with black, it'll look like it's um, kind of the uh, weather, outdoor weather a little bit more than this. So anyway, I'm going to get this finished up and uh, we'll be back. Okay, here we are back. Um, this the weathering of this thing or the uh, dry washes. I mean the, the washes take the longest Anyway, it's all dry. It's um, I, what I'm getting ready to do is um, Prime the rest of it. But anyway, I don't know if you can see in there or not But the weathering has turned out pretty good if, as far as I'm concerned. I think it looks good You see all the all the detail on all the uh, lines in the wood and everything what the, 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 the wood surfaces looks really good so what I wish I had done, and, and I did, and this is what you should do, is when you prime it, you should prime the whole thing. It just makes it so much easier. Yeah, you're going to handle a little bit, but now I'm going to have to mask this off around the door and stuff and prime it. And so I've got to prime the rest of this. And then we go to painting the outside. Um, I did do the interior of the roof. So the, they're, they're already painted and look the same as the interior of the outhouse here. Uh, I still have to paint the door. I haven't done that yet. I'll go ahead and prime that here in a second. But I'm going to mask all this off and prime it. Uh, one thing I don't know if I mentioned earlier, when you put this together and you're gluing it together, I did the outside walls first in the front, is you do need the spacer. Um, there's the one up, it needs to be the same width here. You know, I remember took a piece of uh, popsicle stick and cut it that would fit in there. You need to put that spacer down there when you glue this together. So it will leave that space for the door when you go to put the door on it. it it'll have enough room. So, uh, but you, so you need to make sure that you have, like I said, cut a piece of pop popsicle stick to fit up there and then stick it down here. And that'll give you the right space. But anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and prime all this. And um, now, technically, I've got the, the floor out. Technically, I can go ahead and glue the floor in. Just some... Uh, uh, 
CA or either uh, five minute epoxy to glue it in and I can prime the whole thing all the way around. All right, well, I'm gonna get it primed and um, get the roofs primed and we'll be back. Okay, now that I have it all primed, like I said, it would be much easier if you had to prime the whole thing up front. I just seem to do the things the hard way sometimes. All right, I've got it all primed, go ready for our paint. Uh, what, I, what I'll go ahead and do is glue the two roof halves on. Um, they are, the wood simulated, let's see here, the wood simulated all the way through, but we're just going to go ahead and glue these in place. You can use uh, um, epoxy or CA, but you need to trial fit at first, just like anything. I'm going to put the first one on, come in here, here, and put the second on. And what I would do, as long as it's meeting up here at the top, it's okay. That little back bow there, I would, I just really, <coughs> sorry, I would not worry about that because what we'll do is run a real thin line of glue down there later and just pull it together but we just want to make sure everything fits we're not going to worry about gluing the the um, center here yet just make sure it all fits on there correctly and then we're going to glue the sides and then what once that's all set then we're just going to pull that put a bead of glue and pull that on there so we're actually going to use this to glue the sides on these pieces or the the roof sides on um, if you want, you can clear it, clear it. If you, if you know, you can clean the paint off of where it's going to touch. Uh, sometimes I'll come through there and especially where I know it's going to be some paint uh, or, or glue, I will come in here and just scrape because I know there's a line you can see right beside here. If that line's going to go, I'll remove a little bit of paint on both sides. So I make sure I get some good adhesion. So all we do is take it off where it's actually going to touch the sides here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get this, uh, the roof glued on, and we'll get ready to paint the outside. You can see that, um, I mean, it's, it's all weathered on the inside. I guess you really can't see very well in there. But uh, we'll, get, we'll get this uh, all together, and then we'll go through uh, the final painting of it. Hey, guys, I've got the, this one all primed. And ready to be painted now. I was going to go show you the first one. The first one I did was in a red. Um, I think this is a barnyard red. I think that's the red I did it in. I cannot remember. You really can't go wrong. Uh, this thing has a bunch of washes on it afterwards. Um, I, I, you can see it's got some dark uh, spots, like dark. Uh, I used actually a black wash on it, and I think I went back with a, a brown wash. Uh, I did, did a bunch of different ones. I just kept washing different areas to make it look like it was starting to weather. Okay. Now this one, I think my plan is to go with a green. I, I'm, I, this is a, a light avocado, I think. I, I, you, I, I just want to think I want to put something different on the layout in a different location. Anyway, um, so what I'm going to do is, uh, what you need to think about is, um, what your plan is. I mean, if you're going to do this in a, uh, like one that's more weathered and a natural color, you may want to go with the, the bright, um, the brighter, uh, like I said, the, was it the desert sand or even, even a white, some people have used and then go back over with the black washes and it'll make it look like it's a naturally gray weathered, uh, uh, outhouse anyway the one i'm doing here you can see the color underneath here for that's already in the natural wood but i'm gonna come back and i'm gonna, i am not going to put an undertone on it i mean you could put you could go back and uh, if you want it and put a camel on it paint the whole thing in a camel color you don't want it to, you don't want to cake the paint on there you want to go really light um you could put that under and then after you paint it wipe a little bit off and it'll show some show, show some wood under it if you want to but i think i'm gonna go ahead and go with the all the green and then i'm gonna go back with washes on it but uh yeah this part's the e easier part um we're just gonna paint the whole thing and, uh, and then we're gonna turn around and go washes now one thing i didn't do i left this roof just to flat the, the boards uh, you can put tar paper on it if you want you know like the um like the uh 300 grit sandpaper uh, take take this stuff sand the back of it off and you could you could tar paper the roof if you wanted to but anyway i, I haven't figured out what i'm gonna do yet but I'm, i am going to go ahead and paint the whole thing uh the green color and then i'll move along with the uh, washes and stuff so i'm going to get this thing painted and then we'll move along from there 
Okay, I want to talk to you real quick. I was getting, I'm was i sitting here getting ready to start painting. I, I, I want to show you. This is a really soft brush. It's some I picked up um, in the past. It, it, it's softer than most. Uh, but what I've done is I just, I don't know if you can't see it over here. Well, there it is. I, I just put some uh, paint on my table. And we're not putting it on thick. You can still see the gray under it. So I am, I'm putting it on there and I'm pulling it in. And you know, it's, it's good to put a light coat on there and I'm trying to move with the grain. So you can see I'm going to grain ways that way. And what I'm gonna do is I am pulling this into the grain of the wood or the simulated wood there. But I'm gonna hit that corner there straight down. And we're gonna, we're not putting a real thick coat on there, real thin. If you, if you think you need it more green, after it dries, go back with another coat. Or I mean, in between coats, you could go with a couple washes, get the get the grooves in there really good, and it'll it'll give you some undertones um, around the edges or whatever. So anyway, um, I just wanted to show you this. Like I said, we're not going on real thick. We're going on as th really thin. I see. I think that gives us a good green, like you would say. You know, somebody's just you know just giving a wash of paint on it. So I'm going to go ahead and get this finished. I will finish all this up everything all the way around and then I'll come back and show you what, what that looks like before we start putting washes on it. Okay guys here we are back. Um, actually the building of this is all is technically all done. Now I'm just um, uh, finished finish painting it or whatever. But what I'm gonna do now is um, I, I think I may have liked a little bit darker green but you know, I'm gonna go with this because what we do the, the washes are gonna make it look a little darker anyway. And it's hard to take something dark and, and make it lighter. So what we're going to do is um, I made up a wash here. Um, this is just uh, some black, let's see here, just plain black acrylic in water. And I got my big soft brush again. And so what we're going to do is just going just gonna to give the whole building a, a wash. And I may do four or five of these. And like I said, I'm gonna change. I'll, I will do a um, come back with a different color, like a like the uh, burnt umber. Also, that that kind of uh, gives you a change of colors in it. I should have done the roof last, but. You see, I'm just painting it and we're going to leave, just let it sit and let that dry and we'll do a couple more. That'll really add, bring out the highlights and details. All right. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do four or five of these and, um, then I will, uh, if, if you can't tell it real, I'll have some pictures on my website of what it looks like. Now, one thing I do do is I, keep, I always keep a roll of toilet paper or, or paper in here. And a big dark line like this, I don't know if you can tell, but it's all pooling at the bottom. I'll take it and I'll just hit most of that off because I, I don't want something, I don't want it to end up drying there and be really black. So I will take off. Right along the lower edges, I'll take off that excess. Okay, and that, that takes off the excess. And you'll, you'll find different places where it's pooling at the bottom. I'll usually, like I said, uh, try to get that off so it doesn't dry too dark, just too dark in that one place. It's all the low spots. It'll continue to um, run downhill. Okay, well, we're going to let that sit a while. Uh, I'll do, uh, like I said, four or five more washes, and then I'll um, come back and show you what it looks like in the end. Okay, um, 
now the I, I kind of finished totally finished it I've got uh, I think three washes of black and then I took a, a a brown wash it was a mixture of uh the burnt umber and I think I put a little bit of bark brown and then some um antique maroon I, I kind of mixed all those together I, I probably can't tell I don't know if you can tell the color or not but anyway I washed it with that and just kind of gave it a little bit of a brown look on top of the black so um, I've kind of got it all finished this thing's a neat little old out, little outhouse um, you can add you know flyers to the outside of it however you want to do to make it um, look more uh, localized to your area um, you can add detail to the inside uh, the kit does come with a little uh, Oh, I have to find it. it has a little little tiny square that you could actually, you know, if you go online, maybe find a Sears catalog that you can stick stick down there beside the toilet. Uh, as far as the door, the door that's up to you. I mean, why close it? You know, that you can't see inside. You can uh, take it and glue it in an open position. That'll give you uh, a good view inside. I mean, if you really got really wanted to make sure you can see the inside you could even put an LED in there to, to kind of light it up so you can see inside so but anyway it's a neat little kit it does take some time to uh, put together and paint uh, uh, I'm not sure if it'd be a totally a beginner's kit or not and I hope I've gone through everything if you have any questions you can feel free to email me uh, the kit will be available from tiesplanes.com uh, you can go to that website I have a bunch of uh, G scale items on there. I'll have some uh, pictures also if you need them uh, to uh, look, you know, so you, so you can see what it looks like uh, maybe better than on this film. One thing I did want to add the avocado, I did use the avocado green, and I'm glad I did because the um, even though it looked really light, I wish I had taken some pictures before I started uh, putting the washes on it. It did darken it up a lot. So if you had started with like a Pullman green or a darker green, I think it would. I think it would just been way too dark. But that avocado green. Um, I'm trying to see who is who. Um, I can't find where I, I get so messy when I'm making stuff. Oh, here it is, right here in front of me. It's the Americana light avocado. That's the name of the color I used. But uh, anyway, I think it turned out pretty or nice. Uh, like I said. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, I hope I, I kind of like doing instructions this way because it kind of I hate written stuff. So I will um, just hope you enjoyed the video. Y'all have a good day.